Uh, Ruth Lights, we're going to read uh, Luke chapter 2. And if you want to follow along, it's uh, verse 22, Luke chapter 2, verse 22, going down to verse 40. I neglected to check what page it is in the Bible in your pew in front of you. But, um, but Luke is a, third, it's a third book in the New Testament, so two thirds of the way through the Bible. Luke chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 22. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him, Jesus, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. And moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong and was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for what it teaches us. Thank you for... The stories that are given to us for a reason and I pray Lord that that you would speak through your words speak through these weak words of mine to touch our hearts and to encourage us Lord please give me the strength to do this and take this time it's yours do whatever you'd like with it in Jesus name amen it is the day after yesterday everything had changed God had come to earth as a tiny baby in a manger. He is Emmanuel, as we sang, God with us. The arrival of Jesus ushered in a new era in human history. From that point onward, even time itself was measured by the arrival of the Christ child. The day after is a day like no other day had been before. Yet not every reaction to the events of the day after was the same for everyone. They were different for different people, just as different people's reactions are different today. It was the day after, and Jews throughout Israel awoke in their ancestral towns to the reality of having to register with the Roman government. The bitter reality of Roman occupation and Roman oppression was driven home more forcefully than ever as they stood one by one before government officials and began the process that would see their hard-earned money being sent off to faraway Rome in order to support the lavish lifestyles of their oppressors. Nothing had changed on this day after for them. If anything, this day after was even more discouraging than yesterday. There was a stir among the Jews in Bethlehem, however, that made this day after a little more interesting. Shepherds were going through the city, telling everyone who would listen that they had seen angels in the sky the night before. And these angels had announced the birth of a Messiah, 
who would one day bring peace on earth and deliverance to all. And the people were amazed at what the shepherds were saying. It was an amazing tale, a tale almost too amazing to be true. And it was obvious to some that, well, maybe these shepherds had been spending a little too much time in the sun. They'd gone a little loopy. Um, and besides, who would ever listen to anything a shepherd would have to say? They were not considered to be the most reliable or trustworthy of people. The people were amazed at what the shepherds told them, and they may for a moment have attempted to believe the tale, but then again, remember, these were shepherds. Could you really believe anything a shepherd would say? But there were some who took the message of Emmanuel, God with us, seriously on this day after. Like Simeon. He was righteous. He was devout. He feared and loved God. And he was someone upon whom the Holy Spirit rested. Because Simeon had made a habit of living a life of worship. Of living a life where the Holy Spirit was welcome in his life. And God made a promise to Simeon that he would not die before he saw with his own eyes the Lord's Messiah. And moved by the Holy Spirit, Simeon just happened to go to the temple at the very moment when Mary and Joseph were presenting the infant Jesus in the temple to the Lord, as required by Jewish law. And at that moment, the Holy Spirit revealed truth to Simeon, and his heart leapt within him. And he took the baby Jesus in his arms and he praised God for keeping his promise. Praised God for bringing the promised Messiah to Israel after years of longing and years of waiting. Anna the prophetess also took the message of Emmanuel, God with us seriously on this day after. As a widow for almost 60 years, she spent her time in the temple praying and fasting and worshiping God. And when she caught sight of Jesus, she immediately knew. And she began to tell all who were also living and waiting, just like she was, and that God had kept his promise and that Messiah had come. The same event, yet different reactions. Anna had lived a life of prayer, of talking with and listening to God. So, so when God was ready to tell her about the Messiah, and show her who he was, she was all ears. She was ready to listen. And she was in the right place to receive God's message. And Simeon lived a life of waiting, but not waiting in some delusional hope, but, but with a true hope, a certainty that God would act. And he lived a life led by the Holy Spirit. And it was the Holy Spirit that led him to the temple on just the right day, at just the right time, so that he would see what God wanted him to see. And when that happened, Simeon responded with praise and obedience. The majority of the Jewish people, however, were too preoccupied, too preoccupied with the cares and the concerns of their lives. They were focused on the task at hand of submitting to the Romans and found in this task little cause for rejoicing. They were not in the right place, they were not in the right frame of mind. They were not in the right attitude of spirit to be able to even begin to receive what God wanted to reveal to them on this day after. And so it is today on the day after. God has come. Emmanuel, God with us. In response to the longings of our hearts, in response to our desperate need, in response to the, the questions which plague our minds and our souls, God has not given answers, but he has given us himself. And we just spent a day in celebration, a day where, despite the best efforts of some, the message of Christ still seeps through and touches the hearts and minds of humanity. Yet so many still do not see so many are so preoccupied with the cares and concerns of this world. So many are consumed with anger or bitterness, feeling hard done by in this life. They are not in the right place because they have gone where they want to go, or they've gone where the world tells them to go. They're not in the right frame of mind because they've not yielded their thinking to God. 
They're not in the right attitude of spirit because they, they've not yet asked God to renew a right spirit within them. So many people today on the day after, like the majority of people on that day after 2,000 years ago, are the same. They're oblivious to what God wants to show them. Oblivious to what God has done and what he wants to do in their lives. We might even find ourselves in that situation from time to time where, for a time, the cares and concerns of this world have taken center stage. And the reality of Emmanuel, the reality of God with us, has become overshadowed. But there were others that day who could serve to us as role models. Simeon lived a life of righteousness, a life led by the Holy Spirit, submitted to the Holy Spirit. So when God told him, go to the temple, Simeon recognized the voice of God, and he went without question. And likewise, if we are to experience the full impact of the day after, we too must be led by the Holy Spirit. We too must learn to, to recognize the voice of God, to be able to distinguish it from all the other voices in the world, to be able to know the difference between right and wrong, to know God's leading, to know the difference between God's leading and our own desires. We too must live lives that are aware of the promises of God, and, and the lives that wait in faith for the fulfillment of the promises of God to come. For when we are found waiting, listening for God to act, we won't miss it when he does. And we can then, like Simeon, become part of God's story that he wants to write in this world. And Anna was a role model. She lived a life of prayer and worship. She lived a life completely in tune with God. And so when the day after it came, it was no big surprise to Anna. She was ready to receive it, ready to hear the news of the Messiah, and confident enough in the message that she could then pass it on to others who were also waiting. If we want to experience the full impact of the day after, we too must live lives of prayer and worship, Lives that are in constant communion with our Father. Lives that are lived in sync with God's desire and in sync with God's plan. And as we do, then when God moves on the day after, we'll be in exactly the right place to receive it. Exactly the right place to be in the center of what God wants to do in our lives. In the center of what God wants to do in our families. In the center of what God wants to do in our church in the center of what God wants to do in our community. On the day after, everything has changed. And God is moving to make that change a reality in the world, a reality in the lives of the people that he's created, in the reality, a reality in the lives of people that he loves. And we can miss the move of God on the day after by being concerned and preoccupied with the cares of this world. Or we can be ready to experience what God wants to do and be part of it by listening to Him, by submitting to the Holy Spirit, by, by letting Him lead, by living lives of obedience and prayer and worship, by being in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, living lives that are as in sync with God as possible. The shepherds were also people who were living on the day after. Now, on the day before, God had shaken their lives, their boring, routine lives in ways that were beyond anything they could possibly imagine. And they were compelled by what they saw to leave their sheep and find the baby Jesus, find Emmanuel, God with us, that the angels had spoken about. And when they saw the child, they were then compelled to go and tell everybody that they could about what they had experienced. And then came the day after, and the shepherds went back to work, guarding their sheep. Nothing had changed on the outside on the day after. They still had a lousy dead-end job. They were still on one of the lowest rungs of society's ladder. They still had to deal with dumb, smelly sheep. Yet on the day after, everything had changed. 
because they had changed. Even if their daily circumstances around them hadn't changed, their experiences with God, with the God who had given himself to them, had changed them on the inside. And they became obedient to God. Instead of just dismissing the angels as, oh, that's a figment of our imagination, or instead of leaving it to someone else to pursue the matter and, and, and tell the, everybody else, they went and experienced for themselves the moment when God came to earth. And they became worshipful. They acknowledged the truth they saw before them in the Christ child and let that truth penetrate their hearts and influence their actions. And they became evangelists. They were compelled to share with others all that they had heard and all that they had experienced. They weren't trained religious scholars. In fact, they were probably exactly the opposite. But they had an experience with God, an experience with Emmanuel. And that was all the qualification they needed to share the message that God had given himself to everyone and to share that message with everyone. And often when we're living in the day after, not much, change, not much changes on the outside. We still go to work, we still go to school, we still do the laundry and do the dishes, we still have responsibilities to look after and people who depend on us, money is still tight, arguments still happen, that disease is still with us. Everything looks the same, but the reality is that on the day after, Everything has changed because you have changed. Because God has come and He's given Himself to you, all of Himself. Because Jesus Christ has come and made a way to the Father, made a way for us to have this deep relationship with our Creator. Because the Holy Spirit's come to live within us, giving us the love we need, giving us power, giving us a sound mind. There's a song that says, sometimes God calms the storm, and sometimes God calms his child. Sometimes God miraculously changes the circumstances around us, and sometimes, just as miraculously, he changes us. And the day after might look the same, at first blush, as any other day before it. But as we encounter Emmanuel, God with us, and let his truth change us, then the day after becomes something brand new, a day unlike any other. Mary and Joseph ex experienced the day after as well. It was a day of feeding the baby Jesus and changing his diaper. It was a day of picking him up when he cried and of gazing at him with love and wonder as he lay asleep on the straw. It was a day of awe and wonder at what the shepherds had told them, a confirmation of all of God's promises to them up to that point. It was a day for Mary of trying to get a bit of rest and recovery from the whirlwind of the previous few days. It was a day for Joseph to begin to make plans for the trip home, to continue to make plans as to how to support his new family. For Mary and Joseph, it was a day that marked the beginning of a new life of responsibility, a new life of raising a family. It was a day for them to begin to get to work. And as we live in the day after, there is great joy and great excitement in truly experiencing Emmanuel, God with us. There is great comfort and strength in knowing that we are never alone, that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. We know that God has given us himself and that we can move forward in life knowing his presence and his protection and his guidance. But to whom much is given, much is required. And if we are to live in the day after, accepting the reality that everything has changed and that we have been changed, then we must also live in the day after accepting the responsibility to do something with that change. And just as Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple and did everything that was required of them by Jewish law, 
So we are recalled to do everything that was required of us by God as we live in the day after. We are required to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. We are called to persevere in trials, to let God mold us into the image of Christ. We are required to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. We are required to go and make disciples of all nations. If we are to live life in the day after, with Emmanuel, God with us, then we are expected to get to work, to be about doing the work of our Father, to take his burdens upon ourselves, burdens that are light because he carries them with us. The day after is a time to take what we've been given, which is God himself, and to take that gift and, his, and let him work through us to make a difference in this world, to bless others and to lead them to Jesus. Living in the day after is not simply a day to bask in the glow of the previous day. I know Boxing Day can be like that sometimes, we just bask in the glow of yesterday, and it's nice. But that's not what it's meant, the day after is not meant to be that. Living in the day after means sharing that glow with as many people as possible, in as many ways as possible. So that those who walk in the day after who might be totally oblivious to the fact that God has come and has given himself, that they may hear and have an opportunity to experience the day that everything changed, so that they too can live life changed in the day after. At first appearance, the day after might not look all that different than any other day, but it is still the day after everything changed the day when God gave himself to us. Will we be found living lives in sync with God's ways so that we will recognize that change? Will we allow God to change us on the inside so that we can view the unchanged circumstances around us in a whole new light? Will we be willing to get down to work and doing what God is requiring of us in the day after. This is the day after. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, living out God's plan, and living out God's purpose for us and for this day. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we thank you that on this day after we can celebrate the day when everything changed. The day when you gave yourself to us, Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you, Lord, that even when we don't have all the answers and we don't know all the reasons why, we still have you. You've given us yourself to walk with us and give us what we need day by day. And Lord, we thank you for that. Help us, Lord, to be able to share with others who will look at the day after and think, well, everything's the same, nothing's going to change. Help us, Lord, to point to you, to point to Emmanuel, to point to the fact that you are with us, and by your Holy Spirit, want to change us, and make us more like you, and give us what we need to make it through this life, and to share your love with others. And help us, Lord, on this day after, those of us who have experience you and experience what it means to have, be God, to have God with us. Help us, Lord, to get to work. Help us, Lord, to get down to doing the day-to-day -day things you're calling us to do. Help us, Lord, to be there for those who need us, for those who depend on us. Help us, Lord, to, to do all that you've required of us. Give us the strength that we need to carry the burdens that you give us in our heart for others. Help us, Lord, to bless others and lead them to you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us yourself. Thank you, Lord, for this day after. And help us, Lord, to live out the change that you've made in our hearts so that we can demonstrate and bring that change to the world around us. We pray these things in Jesus' name.
Amen.